Jacques de Aldersburg's funeral drew masses. All wished to bid farewell to the man who had saved Vezima. The bloody street fighting ended. People saw the knights as heroes. Non-humans faced greater hatred than they did before the rebellion. The king's edicts punishing the Scoia'tael caused a mass exodus of elves and dwarves. Yay! History can at times be cruel. The king turned a blind eye to the iniquities of the Order of the Flaming Rose. The new Grand Master, Siegfried of Donnell, reformed the order, consolidated its power. The sorceresses failed to consolidate theirs at the court of King Foltest. The king punished or exiled those who had plotted against him in his absence. New fortunes were made amidst the ruins. Some won, others lost. The natural order of things. Few knew what had really happened in those days in Vizima. They were those who destiny had brought together with Geralt of Rivia. Yet they chose to remain silent. What then happened to the Witcher? That is a different tale entirely. Hmm. Temeria and Redania are allies, thanks in no small part to you. For your toil, a worthy pouch of gold. Your Highness. Better be a bigger pouch. Master. Farewell, sire. What the hell is that? Where'd the king go? I guess he's hurt, injured, whatever. My money. Oh. Ouch. I kicked that sword away. A woman, probably. Oh. That's not Berengar, is it? It's a Witcher, but I don't think it's... Hmm, interesting. <sighs> Alright, so that was the Witcher. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this Let's Play. Those of you who have watched the entirety of it. Or those of you who have just jumped to the end. So, normally this is where I talk about what I think of the game. Uh, anyone who has been watching knows pretty much what I think of the game. And knows what is coming. Uh, I did not like it. It was... The combat was incredibly clunky. Uh, Igni was grossly overpowered. The... Difficulty scaling on creatures was ridiculously different. Like, you'd be fighting enemies the vast majority of the time, they're a joke, and then fight something that's way 
like more ridiculously powerful than it should be. Like those stupid plant things in the swamp. Like why in the hell were those doing such insane damage and high, having such ridiculously high hit points? They weren't. They were just like little plant creatures, and I thought it was pretty stupid that they were so incredibly powerful. But yet these other enemies that we're supposed to be scared of, we can completely demolish. Like they're nothings. It's made no sense. Uh, and God, what else is wrong with this game? Uh, the Jesus Christ, the quests and the time thing was so frustrating where you would get a quest and the guy's like, the guy or the girl or whoever would only be available to give it to you during the day. And they're like, oh, you have to do this at night. And then you go do it at night because you have to wait. And then you go back to turn it in. It's like, oh, no, you have to be back during the day to turn it in. It's like, Jesus Christ, just take the quest item now. I don't want to wait. And it, this happened repeatedly where you'd have to keep switching day and night. And I guess the idea was, well, you would do a bunch of quests at once. And by the time you got around to finishing the other quests the next day, or it would be day or it would be night or whatever. It just didn't work like that because a lot of times I wanted to finish the damn quest. It would either want to just finish the quest because I wanted to get it out of my event, out of my log, or I'm done with all the other quests, or multiple quests are like, oh, you have to be at night, or it has to be during the day. So that was just terrible. It happened all the time. And the invisible walls, or the very s small slopes that you couldn't go up, or like, oh, this, this little, there's a five inch platform you can't go across you have to go all the way around the, the swamp being the biggest offender there holy shit getting to that tower there's like some small brush and Geralt apparently can't get through it he has to walk right there's no reason for this a problem there's no reason for it like it wasn't like there was hiding loading times or anything so you have to walk all the way around this circle to get in, then all the way around to get back out. It was just a fucking nightmare. Not being able to walk off of slopes to get to spots. And the game just seemed to go out of its way to want to waste your time. With the quests, with the invisible walls, with not being able to go up small hills, with not being able to drop down small hills, with only one path being able to go into places a lot of times, like the graveyard area in the uh, the swamp, is just, uh, just over and over. Just like, why? Why are you just trying to waste my time? I want to get to the, no quick travel. Uh, there were there was the porters that you could use, but I would want quick travel. If you're gonna like, it wouldn't. The quick travel wouldn't have been as big of a deal if it wasn't so bad about making you run back and forth constantly and throwing up the goddamn invisible walls and other shit. So all that compounded into a lot of time wasted running back and forth. That was really fast credits. Thank you for that. And I realize this is a smallish, smallish team. This is their first RPG. You know, I get that, but these... These things aren't like technical problems. Like the combat being clunky, I fine. Small team, they couldn't, you know, it's it's probably very difficult to get that going. All right, stuff like that I can understand. But when it's shit like arbitrary invisible walls and shit that making you run around a long way just to get from point A to point B, that's just bad. That's just shitty design. That's brain dead design. Like I, under no circumstances can I imagine a case where they're like, let's make this. So instead of running from point A to point B, they have to run from A and make a complete circle and run all the way around. And then they can get to B and this do this over and over and over and over again. Like at what point were they like, though, this is totally cool. Like people would love this. Makes no sense. The story was interesting. Uh, a lot of it was pretty obfuscated as to what you were supposed to do. Some of it I'll take the blame for because you know you're supposed to read the entries and whatnot that's fine you know i'm i'm fine with the game not just basically always telling you 100 percent of the time this is how to solve this quest or this is how to do this thing so i i'm fine with that and i admit that there's some of that stuff i probably should have caught by reading the entries and whatnot that's fine because then some of the stuff was just like how the fuck was i supposed to know that like saving the striga 
how are, how was I supposed to remember that? Oh, running around in circles until the candles light themselves. That's that's how you save her. It is, I don't know. Made no sense. Um. The uh, I mean, the thing is, like, there was no point where I was really overly enjoying myself. Maybe the very beginning was kind of fun, but the the second chapter in particular was just awful like i it took everything i had to not just quit the game but after that it got better again to at least where it was going back to mediocrity instead of oh i'm enjoying myself i'm having fun playing this so as far as a rating would go i would rate this like a five uh maybe a 4.5 4 4.5 to 5 is about what i would rate this it has its okay parts there are some cool ideas like i like the alchemy i like how you could experiment i like how the whole like if you used components with the same sub ingredients you could make potions that gave you secondary benefits stuff like that is cool i didn't use it that much uh, but i still think it's really cool that it was there and then when i did use it i was like oh like, that's really neat that i took the extra time to do this and I'm getting, you know, uh, benefits from that. So stuff like that is cool. I like that. But there's just too many negatives. If you are considering, and I'll also give like a price suggestion as like what price should you buy the game at? Honestly, my, my suggestion is to not buy it. If you want to know the story, obviously either watch this Let's Play or just go to the Wikipedia and catch up uh, because it's just not worth it. It's not worth the headache. It's... There's too many frustrations for me to be able to honestly suggest this game for anyone to buy. If you absolutely must buy it, maybe five or ten bucks tops. But seriously, don't buy, don't play it. Buy the Wikipedia or buy the Wikipedia. Read the Wikipedia instead. The hassle is just absolutely not worth it. I, I'm honestly blown away that this game gets like sevens and eight ratings like i don't know who these people are giving it these ratings because the game absolutely does not deserve that under any circumstances i still do plan on doing witcher 2 i've heard it's much better i can't see how it could be any worse but yeah i just i it's just a mediocre game with very long stints of being a very bad game so yeah, that's, that's why I'm kind of leaning more towards for 4.5 because there was too much time where I was just frustrated with the game not being good at all. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for Witcher 2, which will probably begin the day after this LP ends. So if you're watching this now, tomorrow, probably you will see a Witcher 2 video. Thank you guys for sticking through it. I know I complained a lot during this, this LP, but uh, I really didn't really enjoy it very much. The game, anyway. Uh, it was, I guess, mediocre at best. So, uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Look forward to Witcher 2. I actually am looking forward to Witcher 2 because I have heard good things about it, which I did about this one, too. But I'm being positive, and I, I really think Witcher 2 will probably be better. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.